Okay guys, in this video, we're gonna go through the process of writing out proper Lewis dot structures and the method behind that, okay? So the first thing we need to talk about with Lewis dot structures is what they can do for us and what they can't do for us, okay? Lewis dot structures are not designed to give us the shape of a molecule. What they are designed for is giving us a location and number of bonds and elect electrons on the molecule. So if we look down here, this is a correct Lewis dot structure for water. Okay, now it may look a little weird to you because we normally see water with kind of a kink or a bend in it when we draw it up on the board. But for the Lewis structure, because we're not concerned with the shape, we don't have to draw that bend in there. All we're really worried about is does it have a single bond on either side of the oxygen and does it have these two unshared pairs of electrons sitting on that oxygen also. Okay, so with Lewis structures, we're just going to worry about bonds and electrons. We'll deal with shape in, a, in, a, in something coming up in, an, in this unit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have two different methods of doing that. And here on the screen is a whole bunch of text. You can see those in your notes also. Uh, this is your step-by-step -step way of drawing out Lewis dot structures. Okay, so I'm going to go to the screen here, and then we're going to actually work one out going through each one of these different steps as we go through. So what I'm going to work out or what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start, start with uh, the molecule um, nitrogen tribromide. Okay, MBr3. And within MBr3, first thing I want to do is I want to take and total up the number of valence electrons that I have. Okay, so I know that nitrogen has a total of five valence electrons and that bromine has seven, but I'm taking that times three because I have three of them in here. So if I add that up, uh, seven times three is 21 plus the five. I have 26 electrons to work with on this molecule. Okay. Which means when I'm all done with this, I better still have 26 electrons there. No more, no less. That's my number. I had to stick with it. Okay? So when I do this, our first step is we want to put the molecule, and we want to make the molecule so that the least electronegative substance is in the center. Okay? The easiest way to identify that is you look at it and you put whichever atom is written first in the molecule in the middle. Okay? So in this case, it was nitrogen. So because nitrogen was written first, that's going to go in my center. And then on the sides of that, I'm going to put the bromine in the different quadrants around that molecule. Okay? Um, and then what I want to do is start putting on my electrons. Okay? So one way that I always attack this is since I had 26 electrons, if I divide that by 2, that tells me that I have 13 pairs to work with. So I have 13 groups or 13 pairs of electrons to put on this molecule. And... When you bond, you do put everything in pairs whenever possible. So we're not going to have any separate individual single electrons. It's all going to be in electron pairs. So because I have 13 pairs, I'm going to use up three of those pairs to make bonds between my nitrogen and my bromines. Okay? So that means I've used up some of those, and I only have 10 pairs left to work with. Now, another rule that I have is that each one of these atoms here, 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 and here, they all need to have eight valence electrons around them to satisfy the octet rule. So if we count, right now, nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around it, so it needs two more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my pairs, and I'm going to end up with nine pairs left. Remember, these are pairs of electrons, not individual. These are pairs. And I'm going to put one of my pairs on that nitrogen, okay? And then, let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. There you go. And then, now what I have left over is I have nine more pairs. Well, it kind of works out nice, because if we count, the bromine actually right now only has two electrons around it, so it needs six more, which means it needs three more pairs. So, this one needs three pairs, this one needs three pairs, and this one needs three pairs. Well, I have nine, so three times three is nine, so that's gonna work out nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three pairs on each of my bromines, and then that should take care of, or I should actually use up, all my nine pairs, and I'll have zero electrons left to work with, and then I should do some checking. Okay. So the first thing I want to check is I want to check, do I still have 26 electrons on the whole molecule? Okay. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So sure enough, I have my 26 electrons, so I'm good. Next thing I want to check is to make sure that they all have eight valence electrons in it. So if I go over the bromine, and if I ignore all of this stuff over here, and all I do is look at from here down on bromine, 
and I count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons on the bromine. Okay. If I do the same thing over here, but then now I actually just cut the bromines off, and I look at just the nitrogen, okay, and I count them, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now the bromines are all the same, so I know that one of them was good, the other ones are good also. So they all have eight valence electrons. So if they all have eight valence electrons, that means I've done the molecule correctly. Okay. Now one thing that can happen, so we were lucky on this molecule that when we were looking at this, that it had all of its stuff was balanced out and had eight valence electrons using single bonds. Okay. But what would happen, let's say for example, what would happen if for some reason, uh, a couple of these valence electrons were gone. So let's say we had a molecule that was something like this where we had nitrogen and whatever we have over here. What if we ran out of electrons and we were missing some here? Okay, so I get all done and I count up my electrons and I have eight, I have eight, I have eight, and this one only has six on it. Okay, so that would make me really sad. But what would I do if I only had six here? Well, the next step is if you don't have eight on each one of them, some of the electrons that you put in unshared pairs, and these, these different unshared pairs, some of those we may have to use to actually make a double bond or a triple bond. Okay? So in this case, what we'd want to do is take these two electrons here, and we'd want to make them into a double bond instead. Okay? So we wouldn't... Uh, have this empty spot anymore, and we would take these electrons off here, get rid of those, and instead we would put in another bond. Okay, so what that would do is now that my nitrogen it still has its eight, but now we gave two electrons that the bromine can also, the bromine now can also share two. Okay, so the last step to this process is if when you check it you don't satisfy the octet rule then you go to sharing more electrons with double bonds and triple bonds to make that happen, okay? All right, so that is the method in terms of how you would do Lewis structures, the most common way that um, I want to show it and kind of teach it to you guys. So this is kind of your baseline method of doing it, okay? Uh, in our next segment, I'm going to show you a way to do it very similar, but to use more math involved in terms of determining your bonds, okay? So I call this my, more like our standard method. The next method I show you in our next clip is the mathematical method of doing Lewis dot structures. Thank you.